good afternoon today we will study estimation costing under estimation costing the contents today's content will be valuation valuer purpose of valuation sinking fund salvage value scrap value depreciation and then numerical so we will study these contents under valuation unit so what is valuation it is the art of assessing the present fair value of a property at a stated time the valuation of anything is an estimate of the value of that thing in terms of money it is based on certain facts and only after a judicious processing of such facts we can suggest the value of fair price of the property so there is a basic difference between cost and valuation the valuation as we have already said that is a fair value of the property at that given time so at the particular time there, there will be some value of that uh, property especially tangible assets which is a, a home or a building or whatever will be so that value will be fair value and that on the given time so this is what a value means but if we say cost so cost will be the the purchase cost because cost will uh, when you purchase a thing there it will be it will be new it will have uh, the uh, it will have the maximum utilization it will be utilized until its uh, life span so by the whole life span it will it its life will get reduced and the uh, the function for which it is designed and made will get obsolete day by day so if you purchase that thing it if it is a new thing then there will be a cost so let's say if it is a 1000 uh, uh, rupees after uh, its life it will not be of any worth or be almost like minimum uh, let's say 10% of the value so this is what the uh, value means value means there will be some amount of money which will be uh, uh, stated or assessed at the time at the given time but the cost will be of the new thing or the thing which we have purchased at that particular time so this is the basic difference between the cost and the value now if we talk about the value we have already talked about the valuation we must know who can do the valuation and who is actually the valuer a good valuer who does valuation is an engineer or an architect in context of the construction business who must possess sound knowledge of following subjects so what are the subjects these are estimating and costing the subject should be uh, the subject which he is in having a profound knowledge is uh, estimating and costing of the uh, building and its elements surveying and leveling of different uh, levels of when you are constructing a building uh, planning designing planning and designing of the building as well experience in construction work he should have prior experience of that work for which he is doing valuation law of contracts he must have a sound knowledge of the contract laws which are applicable on the given time or at the time of the making contract and the central and local government taxation schemes so he must also understand the uh, law of contracts as well as the central government taxation schemes which is which will be there as part of the contract or which which are included in the contract while uh, when the client has done the contract with the contractor he must know these things very profound profoundly now what is the purpose of valuation uh, purchase of investment or for occupation uh, the purpose of valuation is for the purchase of for investment uh, if you want to purchase a uh, let's say a home for living so it can be for that purchasing uh, make a tangible asset of for living in for let's say if it is for renting also or you simply want to invest some money you can invest by purchasing a constructed already constructed finished property next tax fixation if you want to purchase a property for the sake of just 
get a rebate in the uh, tax which we will pay afterwards. You can do so under tax fixation. You can uh, apply for a loan and then again get a rebate on loan and we can uh, save the money uh, in the government schemes under the government various schemes which it states when you will fill your income tax return. Now you can also uh, do the valuation of your property at the time if you want to sell your purchased uh, uh, property. Uh, as I said already, rent fixation. If you want to rent a uh, facility, you can do the valuation of the, at the time when you are renting it. You can do the valuation at a particular time, and you can know the the, the lease for which you are giving for rent. And at the rent, uh, you can depreciate the value within that one year of your property, uh, and you can go for the uh, the amount of rent you will fix. Now, for the insurance premium, you have to pay the insurance premium and go for the value of the uh, property for mortgage for mortgaging it or for to get the mortgage value or the security value and for the uh, for the purpose of giving wealth tax and estate duty uh, applied or exercised by the government local bodies. Now. Apart from valuation, there are few more uh, terms which one must know while uh, studying the valuation. First is sinking fund, uh, amount which has to be set aside at fixed intervals of time out of gross income so that at the end of the useful life of the building or property, the fund should accumulate to the initial cost of the property. So the sinking fund is a fund uh, it is different from the depreciation fund or depreciation cost, but it is uh, a, a amount of money which has been kept aside once you purchase the uh, the property, and uh, you will pay the property the the, the, the value the sum you have uh, kept aside. You have kept aside for uh, from the day you have this purchased property till the property get obsolete for use and then you have to replace it with another facility so for replace of the facility you must uh, get you have must have some money and that some money should be equal to the amount of the uh, the thing you have purchased a few years back uh, what will be the amount can that will be so this is what sinking fund is now the scrap value is the value of dismantled material of the property at the end of its utility period and absolute useless except for sale as a scrap. So once the scrap is uh, uh, the, the, the pro, uh, in context of the construction property, it is the scrap once you purchased a home for living and uh, the lifespan of the home is completed now, you have to you have to dismantle it because it is unsafe for Living. So you have dismantled, you have to dismantle it, but still after dismantling the property, you may get some amount when you sell that uh, dismantled material. And that material is maximum of 10% of the cost of the new cost then you have purchased this. So it will get almost 10% only. So the scab uh, uh, the scrap which you will sell after dismantling may fetch you around 10% of the, of the money which you have spent at the time of purchasing the property. It applies to an old building which has outlived its useful span of life and repairing. So after repairing and after living it and after using that property for more than its lifespan or at least at the, uh, the age of its lifespan you can dismantle it and you can sell it to the scrap. Now, what is salvage value? So, it is estimated value of a built up property at the end of its useful life without being dismantled. So, the basic difference between scrap value and salvage value is that one is being, uh, what is the value when you sell it dis after dismantling the property, but this is not after dismantling, it is before or without, without being dismantled. Generally accounted by deducting the depreciation from its new cost. So when you purchase this property, you just depreciate the cost and minus from the cost you purchase and you can get the salvage value. 
For salvage value, the position will take the form of a sale of the asset to some purchaser who will continue to use it for the function which is designed after the remodeling and recruitment. So once you have not uh, disbanded it, but you have uh, got the salvage value uh, after uh, deducting the deposition from the cost of purchase and then you sold it to some other purchaser and he purchased it and then remodeled it and replaced it and used for some other purpose. So this is how uh, we get the salvage value and this is the basic salvage value and scrap value. Now what is depreciation? So uh, depreciation, uh, it, uh, we, uh, we have a de divided depreciation in three basic fundamental parts. One is physical depreciation. So under physical depreciation, one, number one is wear and tear from operation. So if you have uh, purchased a facility, so uh, when you use that facility, uh, there will be wear and tear of the facility during the course of time you use it. And that will account it to wear and tear operation. So you, the uh, the, um, the because of wear and tear of that property, because of uh, from the operations for the functions you use that property, uh, it get the, the life uh, the, the life get reduced, and with the life reduced there will be some depreciation of the cost also. Second is decrepitude. Um, that is action of time and elements. So. One is solely from the wear and tear of the operation, another is the action of time and element. So, if I am consider, considering only the age of that, uh, uh, the property, then the decrepitude will come. If I am considering only wear and tear of the, uh, from the operations for functions for you, which you are using that facility, then it comes under wear and tear from the operations. So, decrepitude that is action of time and element, so the life reduced and with the time the, you, you use that facility, there is a depression and the depression will come, comes under the attitude. Now, second is from the functional point of view. From functional point of view, uh, one is inadequacy, another is obsolescence. So, how it is inadequate? Inadequacy, uh, uh, for example, you purchase some facility uh, and that facility for some function and after some time, you have seen that this particular facility is not adequate to use for the desired uh, uh, purpose for which you have purchased the function for which you have purchased it. Then it comes under inadequacy. So the facility becomes inadequate to serve your purpose for which you have purchased it. And second affluence is that uh, uh, the facility which you have purchased. Uh, is, is such that uh, there will be uh, if there is a more load of work and that facility is not able to withstand the load which you have put uh, in that uh, for the purpose for which you have purchased then the property will become obsolete because you have increased the man, uh, the the purpose and you have just uh, introduced more or you have just uh, using it more uh, for which you have not uh, per, uh, you, you didn't have a thought at the time of purchase. That's why, for that uh, increased amount of load, the thing became obsolete. And for obsolete, it comes under obsolescence. So, this is obsolescence depreciation. Now, the third is contingent. Contingent is mainly because of the accidents. Uh, if it is uh, uh, because of the various accidents, you use the facility, there might be some accidents, but the accidents. The contingent depreciation will come from the, uh, the accident comes under contingent depreciation. So these are the three basic depreciations which uh, which which a facility go through its whole of its lifespan. Now uh, we can uh, we'll go for uh, numericals on based on these uh, uh, things. Now first of all uh, we'll go for. The numerical, this one. So, in this numerical, uh, once we we'll study that a governor intends to purchase a land of 100,000 square meter 
area located in the suburb of a big city to develop it into plots of 700 square meter each after providing necessary roads and paths and other amenities uh, the current sale price of small plots in the neighborhood is rupees 30 per square meter the colonizer wants a net profit of 20% from that now we have to work out the maximum price of the land at which the owner may purchase the land for which th these things are given to us so we now uh, do this numerical so first of all oh, we must uh, take the silent things on that so we will solve the numerical on this part now, um, uh, as we know, this numerical is a list. So, uh, the total land total area of land equals to uh, hundred thousand. Square meter. So total area of the land for which a colonizer has to purchase is 100,000 square meter. Now uh, uh, it is a barren land, full land. We have to deduct 30 percent from total, which will be around 30,000 square 30,000 square meter. This for uh, like making roads, paths, and different amenities. So, this is a uh, debit for the total area of land which a colonizer has or uh, have to purchase. Now, remaining seventy thousand square meter, and in this remaining, we have to make the. Uh, homes or the slides or whatever you have to make for the living. Now, uh, under this, we have to uh, divide this 70,000 uh, meter square of area into 100 plots. So, if you divide this 100 plots, once come out to be, uh, let's say, one plot area is. Seven hundred meter square. So seven hundred meter square will be the uh, area of one plot. And uh, selling price of one plot, which is already given in the numerical, is rupees thirty per meter square. So the selling price of the uh, the one plot will be rupees thirty per meter square. So we have multiplied 700 into 30. So it comes out to be uh, 21,000. So this much amount of uh, uh, money will get from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, if we sell each plot, one plot will get uh, rupees 21 from one plot. And now we have, uh, but uh, we have to sell how many hundred plots. So if amount of one plot is twenty one thousand, so the total amount, the total amount of plots will be twenty one thousand into 100 which will be 21 lakh so it will be rupees 21 lakh so 100 plots will be sell at 21 lakh rupee and uh, this is the selling amount this is the amount which uh, the colonizer will get after selling 100 plots of 70 uh, 700 square meter area now the deductions we have to make 
which were uh, given in the numerical is uh, 0.25 uh, for uh, uh, at the rate rupees 0.25 per meter square uh, this is for uh, improving this is for uh, the cost of improving the land and dressing is 0.25 per square meter so for that purpose so for improving the land and we have to we the, the money which will which will be uh, spent is at, at the rate of 0.25 per square meter which comes out to be uh, of total land 100,000 into 0.25 so it will be 25,000 and again for Again, uh, for providing a uh, cost providing infrastructure which is road, water, electricity, it is rupees 3 per square meter. So, rupees 3 per square meter. So, for providing electricity and the basic infrastructure amenities, it comes out to be rupees 3. So, again, it will provide all full land which is 100,000 into 3 which comes out to be 300,000 now the mysterious the mysterious rupees uh, of selling uh, the mysterious for 1% on selling price which is selling price is 21 lakh so 21 21 lakh into 1 upon 100 which comes to be 21,000 and uh, the last is 20% profit so 20% profit on this uh, selling price, we'll get twenty one lakh into twenty percent. So that amounts to be forty two thousand. Now we will add all these reductions, and after adding all these reductions, we got the total reductions applied. On the land is about 8,29,000 rupees. This is total reduction. Now that will be reduced from the total amount, uh, your selling amount, your the amount on which you are selling the 100 plots. So uh, 21 lakh minus so the remaining cost means to 12 lakh 71 thousand so this much amount is left after a deductions and if you uh, this much amount if you uh, you must purchase the land this much amount because if you purchase of this much amount only, then only you will get uh, you will uh, get the profit desired of 20%. So uh, this 71,000 will be divided by 100 because we have to sell 100 flats, 100 plots, and that will come out to be no that how many uh, that that um, amount is divided. The uh, rate, this total amount, this 1271 rupees, this 12,71,000 will be divided by the total land because this much amount we get after the profit and all, and this much we divided by the total amount which we are getting of the barrel land, it will be 100.
So one two three. One two three. So the on will get rupees twelve point seven one per meter square. So the organizer must purchase one uh, the whole land on the uh, on the, uh, the the organizer must purchase whole land on the uh, rate which is rupees twelve point seven one per meter square. Then only he will get twenty percent profit on that land after selling it. So this is how. We will do the valuation of the uh, land. Now we will take one more example on the sinking fund because it is an important topic. We must take one example on sinking fund. We will get the idea what exactly sinking fund is. So uh, the sinking fund example will take yes, this is. So the numerical start from here like this. A owner has installed. The owner has installed air cooler, air cooler in a building. In a building, at a cost of rupees eight thousand. Eight thousand. Uh, if the life of the air cooler, if the life of air cooler is 18 years, is 18 years. Calculate the amount which he should which he should set aside. Set aside. Annually, because sinking fund is uh, having fixed amount, a uh, fixed time as sinking fund to accumulate to accumulate the. Cost at five percent compound interest. So, what will be the amount it has to keep aside annually to uh, as a sinking fund to accumulate the cost at five percent compound interest? So, this is the numerical. Now, we have to solve this numerical. Now, when we use the uh, the, uh, the formula for finding sinking fund is I equals to S I divided by one plus I to power n minus One, where where uh, I equals to annual installment annual installment uh, 
आई इक्वल्स टू वेट इंटरेस्ट एंड एस इक्वल्स टू सिंकिंग फंड टोटल अमाउंट ऑफ सिंकिंग फंड नाउ टू अप्लाई दिस फॉर्मूला so this uh, here in the numerical uh, we have to find i for which the s is given rupees 8000 i we uh, given the common interest because i is interest so we got 5% you to get the decimal value of this so it is 0.05 here i is also 0.05 and is number of years so it will be 18 years Number of years. This whole comes reduced to two eighty four rupees two eighty four. So the total value of the annual instalment which to keep which you have to keep aside annually is rupees two eighty four to calculate the sinking fund. And that sinking fund is eight thousand rupees. So annually for the eighteen years to calculate two eighty four rupees to get the eight thousand rupees as sinking fund. So this is how the sinking fund is being solved. It's a, a pretty easy numerical, and this kind of numerical comes for uh, assessing the value of depreciation, then again scrap value, and we already know scrap value in terms of the uh, total value, the initial purchase value. So this is how the valuation numericals being solved. Uh, in the new class, in the next class, we will solve few more numericals of the valuation, and then we will wrap up the. topic valuation so uh, this is how the, the next class we will solve the numericals for a uh, few more numericals on this and then we will finish the topic of valuation thank you